I finished the season thinking I can win again. Like I want to win again. They That's explain good. it as like I was a baby. I needed to put into bed. I needed them to be there until I fell asleep. I was scared of going to sleep because I didn't want the next day. Like I just didn't want to wake up and experience that again. The racing at that point, I was done with it. I was, I'm never going to race or ride a bike again. So. Nina Hoffman, welcome to the Downtime Podcast. <laughs> That's a good one. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> how how was that from your perspective? Like, is that an acceptable live TV mistake, or is that just a bit? Uh, was it a bit embarrassing? I mean, I feel like at the time I didn't think much of it, uh-huh. and I felt like to me it was just a simple mistake. But when you think about it and how much money's invested into their um, well into the live feed and stuff and how professional they're trying to be um i don't want to be that person that's like oh do you not know who i am but i feel like there are certain athletes or well, every athlete that takes that start list should be known to the people that are being like interviewing so yeah yeah i mean i mean we laughed about it a lot but yeah so many people have been like that. like the amount of tags that i had on social media <laughs> saying it was a disgrace yeah it's like oh i think it's it was unfortunate timing as well eh? like people have been looking for things to complain about in yeah. a way this season people didn't want to like the change yeah. and then that coming up at that time was just another thing in in amongst the weekend that was like a bit up in the air with schedule yeah. changes and all I sorts just, of stuff like I think when I thought about it I was like oh it was my first podium back since my concussion there was a lot to that story yeah it was big and I felt like there was just all that was dismissed and like um you know even if I was hit Nina <laughs> she still got things wrong about Nina like oh yeah, the someone, rainbow strike yeah. comment so and- that would have been disrespectful to Nina anyway yeah, yeah, in yeah, that yeah. so I guess yeah it's all new and that's like to me it's all like I'm I was like whatever like it, it didn't offend me in any yeah, way yeah, it was yeah. just a bit awkward yeah um and I'm sure Aaron and Amory thought the same thing <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I think going forward it would be nice that they they did a bit of research yeah any aspiration from you to do like commentary stuff you've done little bits mm. with Red Bull back in like when you were injured in the past yeah. and you've done a good job of it. You did a bit of hard line, I think, a couple of years ago yeah. or this year. Like, Can you see a future there maybe? Like, Is it something you'd like to be involved in? Yeah, I'd love to do stuff like that. It's, I've done, I haven't done commentary itself. I've done like uh, the little shows mm. and uh, daytime shows and stuff. And I was meant to commentate hard line this year, having ridden it, uh, and it okay. would have been their first uh, co-commentary as someone who's actually ridden the track so yeah, that was yeah. going to be really cool so I felt like I had a, a lot of knowledge there and yeah I was really excited to do that one but obviously the race got cancelled so I was really upset but um, maybe maybe next year I'd love to do it there sweet but also there was actually a, a worry that we actually might get more done than I thought yeah so you know if I was to do a top to bottom will I still commentate but in that case if I do do a top to bottom which obviously is in my dreams, but yeah, yeah. no idea if it's achievable for me. Okay. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know where I was going with that because now I'm dreaming about doing a top to bottom <laughs> from <all life>. <laughs> <laughs> Commentary, top to bottom. Yeah, they were worried that obviously I might want to do that, but even if I could do a top to bottom, um, I don't think I'd be able to compete against the men, obviously, or make okay. the top 10 finalists. So I think I could do a top bottom and then go into yeah. the commentary box and nice. then I'd love to commentate on that. Yeah, that'd be a cool story. Yeah, yeah I wanted to talk about Hardline. Was, were you behind getting that group of women together and working with Red Bull to set that up? Is that right? Yeah, so we've been wanting to do that for a few years now. Um, and then with COVID and my injuries, we just kind of put it to one side. Mm-hmm. And in that time, obviously there were some youngsters coming up and specifically Jess Blewett, who's got, who's um, the most all-rounded, you know, talented rider. So she was knocking on the doors for Red Bull and it got to a point where we're like, we can't put it to one side anymore. We can't keep waiting for me basically to be ready to do it. So that was my concussion year. And we were like, I think Red Bull were like, look, let's just do it. So yeah, they sent Jess in and sadly she she got injured, but Mm -hmm. she ticked off a lot of features and she did really, really well. And that actually gave me more of a boost to be like, see, we need to get this done. Because I felt like, because I was injured and stuff was, like I said, being put to one side a little bit. Oh, we'll just get it done when it can be done. Mm-hmm. This kind of gave everyone the the, the kind Bit of, of fire yeah, to yeah. get it moving and yeah. get the wheels in motion. So, yeah, it spent, we spent like the winter kind of getting stuff ready for that. And it was kind of last minute. Um, so the budget was quite small. Okay. Um, well, we were just going off normal hardline budget to add us in, but I was specific that I wanted some extra days riding because the men have been there for like 10 years now. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, they're quite comfortable on that course now. So, um, and I feel like coming from downhill and racing and also dipping in the free ride and doing some women's events, I kind of knew how to tailor that mm -hmm. to the girls. So we did, I think it went really well and I loved, yeah. I loved every second of it. And to be honest, my goal wasn't to ride at all. It was to kind of provide, okay. use my resources with Red Bull. Yeah. Um, and obviously being so close to the Welsh track and stuff and having been there every year, seeing the boys just sharing my knowledge. But yeah, once I was there, I was kind of like, <laughs> actually, like, I love this shit. This is my type of riding. Like, yeah. Proper filthy Welsh yeah, like, gnarly I loved stuff. It. I just, I realized how much I like getting out of my comfort zone. And it's been a while. When I was a kid, I did that all the time. Yeah, yeah. And that was my favorite type of riding. And that's why I guess I like the race run itself mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, when I was like, when you're at the top of something and you really don't know, and then you just go for it and you end up making it down. And on Hardline, that's every meter of the track. So, yeah, I loved it. We were buzzing. Yeah, that's super cool. What went into the selection of the group of women that were involved? So I was given five places uh -huh. to give out. Okay. Um, obviously, Jess Blewett was going to always be there. And, yeah. I, and me and Jess um, spoke a lot about who we thought would go. And it's really hard because, like I said, so um, Hardline don't pay for your... Um, like your way to get your okay, um, travel, like travel budget, but yeah, they yeah. do give you a fee. Yeah. So that then that covers it all. Okay. But they give it once you've been there and once you've attended. Um, so it's an appearance. Everyone gets an appearance yeah. fee basically. Um, so I had a bunch of girls and there's like a lot, the bit, the list was big and it was yeah. really hard to narrow it down. But at the end I had to go through people that have had race experience, mm -hmm. people that had big jump experience, technical experience, like downhill, like I think a lot of people don't realize, yeah, there's big jumps, but there's some really downhill tech stuff. And yeah, like it's all, gnarly, that track. Yeah, all the run-ins, all the exits to the jumps, it's not pavement. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's gnarly downhill. Yeah, yeah. So in the end, we thought we want to split it. So we want three racers and three free riders. And okay. hopefully we can all merge together yeah. and learn from each other's skills. And we want some senders. We want girls that, you know, just like go up there and like are, are keen for anything. So... Yeah, that's how we, we came to our final six. Uh -huh. Obviously, me and Jess already took up two spots for races. Um, and then Casey Brown was originally on the list, Veronique Sandler. Uh -huh. um, but um, Vero wasn't ready and Casey had an accident before. So yeah. they got replaced. And Louise Ferguson was one that replaced Casey and she killed it. Yeah, she's amazing. She eh? was a really last minute call yeah. and um i've only met lou a couple of times i'd actually met her that year in rotorua okay so i didn't know lou that well um but i think jess was like oh tj the filmer has like said that lou would be a really good fit and stuff and it was so close to the end that, and we needed someone close by that could make it yeah and i was like yeah let's go and then she ended up getting ride of the week and yeah. and she was amazing to be around her vibe everything she's yeah. so chill eh? yeah. but like incredibly capable yeah. on a bike the girls honestly the group of girls that we had was really good just the vibe was immaculate yeah and we all got obviously the boys you know sometimes in a group when there's a rotten <laughs> it just like you know what i mean though like yeah. i'm just so glad because it could have gone both ways it could have been I, I don't expect that from any of the girls that we put on the list or yeah. any of the girls outside of that but you just never know no you don't until you're all together doing exactly. it exactly yeah. and I, I think because i've never done something like that i put a lot of pressure on myself like oh the girl's gonna get on is it gonna work yeah. like is there gonna be too much pressure so that's what we set out it's like no pressure just tick off what you can we, we're just giving you the platform and the access yeah the same access that the men have and then what you do with it is what you choose to do with it yeah so. yeah do you feel like your riding and the other women in the groups riding progresses faster when you're together like that because you're sort of pushing each other showing each other what's possible you've got that like su support i guess yeah definitely because like like i said i've seen Cade and chaos yeah ride there every year um and i have kind of been like oh maybe but it's not until i saw jess that i was like this is possible yeah and then it's not until i saw lou give something a go that i was like well i can do that and like i do kind of tend to sit back and have a look i'm not like i was when i was younger and okay. i just send <laughs> so that really helped me and and the girls like hannah was there but didn't ride because she had a bad shoulder mm -hmm. as she ended her shoulder before hannah bergman and she's an amazing technical rider so i would love to see her back but she was again watching us and being like yeah like helping out and being like if you 
have a bit more speed or whatever. And like, it was just, the group was working really well. And obviously we had Bernard for toe-ins, which yeah. was amazing. We were meant to have Kaylin Chaos, but they ended up having a project to do with Mad Mike. Oh, that was them, was it? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Um, in the end, it was Bernard and on his own, bless him. And um, <clears throat> I asked so many <laughs> stupid questions. They're not stupid, but you know. To, yeah, um, trying to make sure that was, you're safe yeah, going into stuff. Right? He was really patient and um, really helpful. So, yeah. Did he enjoy the day? I don't think so. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he was out in the wet Welsh weather and uh, towing yeah. people into lines. but I think it was mainly for his YouTube channel, but, you know, okay. I'll take it either yeah. way. <laughs> Job done. It's all good. So what um, what were your sort of highlights of that, like, project? Um, just seeing the girls ride was amazing, I think. That was – it felt like a, a step in the right direction. And I was really proud of the way we went about it, the how it was done. So I think there's, we're trying, obviously within the industry, there are a lot of events that are popping up, um, some popping up and disappearing. And then I just feel like some not having the budget mm -hmm. and it's sad to see. And I just really wanted to make sure that we did it in the right way, that it boosted the female presence and people saw that like yeah. this is you know we can do this and we're not doing it in a way where it's like look at us this is what we want to do even though we should be because it's pretty fucking cool it is very cool but yeah. it's a sensitive subject it shouldn't be but you know i feel like you have to tread carefully sometimes and um yeah i didn't hold back and i feel like we did it in the right way and the media was great around mm -hmm. it all and there was no pressure and yeah i feel like there's going to be you know and now we've, we've got six girls going to tasmania for the first i was going to so. ask about that that's yeah. wicked so it's yeah. happening again next year yeah, in Tassie cool. and Wales or? Yeah. 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 I'm not sure if I was allowed to say that now. I've said that, but I'm like, oh, but <laughs> I mean, the invite list is going to be out soon anyway. Yeah. Yeah. We can't be far <laughs> off. Right. And it makes sense. You can't do it and then not have it the next year around. Right. Like it's the yeah. progression. Well, and The Tasmania one scares me a little bit. I'm not going to lie because this is the first one. Yeah. And if you think back to the first Welsh one, they invited about. 30 men and i think eight men were in the finals not because eight men made like were qualified to, no eight men actually made it yeah there were eight men left left in one from piece. that group <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, injuries people that i remember people turn up and be like no i'm pretty sure greg minala i don't want to name drop but i'm pretty sure greg <laughs> has a video out there of him being like i'm not riding this <clears throat> so yeah and since then obviously the track in wales has progressed yeah um it's been they ridden more as well, yeah. which sort of helps, I guess. <clears throat> People like, are more comfortable riding it. The yeah. boys turn up now, they, they've they ridden stuff in the past, so yeah. it's easier to turn up, I guess, for them and be like, oh, I've ridden that. I know that when I go to the Welsh one, I'm like, well, I've done the cannon, so I'd yeah. probably tick that off first. So the Tasmania one, I'm like, geez, like, that's going to be weird. But again, I feel like as long as we're given the, the same opportunity, because yeah. that's all that matters at the end of the day. Yeah, 100%. The same opportunity and given access the same access as the men yeah. you know I f i'm sure the girls would do wonders personally i feel like i'm gonna get there and be like <laughs> 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 but you know there's gonna be a little test event beforehand hope okay. i can get out and have a look and see what the vibe is but yeah we wanted to give the same girls that were in wales to qualify to the next round in tasmania yeah and i think it's going to be limited men as well so and then from there, hopefully, we'll be able to get more. That's more super women. cool. Yeah. yeah. It looks like a good venue. I've seen a few, like, teaser pics of some yeah. big rock so hucks and some big <laughs> gaps. But it's Simon French, I think, involved in it, who's, like, done some amazing stuff over yeah. in Tasmania. So there's good people behind it. I think Dan was out there recently doing yeah. a site visit. And I guess there's all that experience that Dan has for however many, well, 10 yeah. years of hardline, like, that goes, mm -hmm. it sort of fast forwards the Tassie build maybe a little bit to hopefully be a more rideable and approachable yeah. track than hardline maybe well, was 10 think, years ago but this is the thing is i like i know Afi and i feel like <laughs> <laughs> i just feel like he's not gonna be like he i think he wants people to turn up and be scared like yeah that's the whole point of hardline and i, yeah. I have a feeling that the welsh one might have been not too easy and i'm not saying that at all because obviously it's so hard but like i say the men have been going back yeah. over and over and over and the more you do something obviously the more comfortable you get I think he's like, oh, they're getting a bit comfortable. <laughs> so I feel like, you know. Might be another level up. We might need something, yeah. Um, but we have to wait and see, you know. And uh, and I know that there were fears that it might not be hard enough. Mm. But obviously it's going ahead now, so. 
Yeah. It must be. We'll see. <laughs> how how was the Welsh Hardline then? Out of the features that you were kind of, that you ticked off, what was the most intimidating? What was the most enjoyable? Like maybe it was the same thing, but. Well, like I say, like I enjoy that sort of stuff. So as soon as I got stuck in, I was ready to go and quite fired up and I didn't expect to do anything. But as I started riding, I was like, okay. But even like the first rollings, like is like, it's not just the track though it's you know what it's like in the deep valleys of wales <laughs> it is intimidating i think the girls realized that when they got there especially you know people that are from different countries were kind of like whoa yeah. it was so wet windy gray like you get there and the moment you get there you're just like oh you want to retreat like instantly so i think that's what's so intimidating about hardline but i'm acclimatized to that and i see it every day out my window so yeah. i feel like that was quite a good way to be like it's gonna be sweet and it rides well in mm -hmm. the wet like a lot of trails ride well in the wet here so but yeah first feature su super intimidating and bernard was like we've got to do the hard line so we like obviously went through like this hard wiggle v thing that was disgusting <laughs> <laughs> all made it through and then yeah there's like the next bits of super tech i actually missed out on the first day of the rock the big rock oh uh, yeah in the drop. woods yeah yeah i missed that out because um we had a couple of crashes on that and it was just the wood was so wet yeah and i was like i might wait and then the builders were actually trying to build a river down into the cannon because there was so much it was so boggy and there was so much water yeah that we had the diggers up there trying to make it safer um but yeah Bernard ended up doing it even though he, I think he was quite scared to hit it but once he did it he was like it's all good yeah did a few run-ins and that to me the cannon was like the biggest tick for me just because I think it's so iconic and you come yeah. through the trees so fast it's a fast jump and you have to commit there's no well it's like every jump there but I guess I don't know it was big like, yeah. it felt massive <laughs> it looks yeah. massive and the running is scary like yeah. it's a long running but there's just like it's like debris everywhere, <laughs> just like stuff on the floor and you, and it was boggy. The corner was slow. Yeah. But yeah, I knew I had the speed and in the air for that, I was just like, whoa, I was like, I've never been in the air for this long. This is That's sick. That's wicked. Yeah. And we ticked off a few other features down below. Lou actually ticked off the on off on the second day. Mm, I saw that. Yeah. We only got probably like a full day of riding really the time we were there because the weather was so bad and the yeah. wind. Yeah. So when you put that into perspective and. Yeah, the weather and what we got done together. Yeah. It's quite a lot. Yeah. You got that rocky gully done towards the bottom as well, with all the drops in yeah. it. That's pretty like, Yeah, that's tech. savage. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't there is a drop in there that I didn't do. Okay. It's like a, a, it's a flat. flat. Yeah, it's horrible. Eh? But um yeah, a couple of the other girls did that. So they got the whole bottom section done from the obviously we didn't do the, the road gap. Okay. We were eyeing it up. It was say, so everyone windy. Says once you do, yeah, once you do it, yeah. it's actually it's the not scariest that bad, but, one though. Yeah. I think about it every day. Really? Yeah, it's so bad. I have I have nightmares <laughs> about that drop. But then I talk to the guys, and they're like, oh, "I'm the same. Like, yeah. they're all the same." So it's nice if, if the guys are shitting themselves. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so they would have done a full bottom section apart from the very last jump. Okay. And then. The Renegade is one to tick off for the women still. Okay. And the big 90 the and 100. Foot. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Jess did this, has done the step down before. Unfortunately, she broke her ankle on that. Not yeah. from a crash, just from the landing. Yeah. It goes to show just how tech all these yeah. landings are and disgusting some of the landings <laughs> are. But yeah, I was super, super proud of everything I achieved and the girls achieved that weekend. Yeah, 100%. Cool. Do you think we're far off a top to bottom from the women then? It sounds like we're not. I don't think we are really. I think... We did more than what we expected, but I'm just worried that people might jump the gun a little bit. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, from a brand side or a brand yeah. perspective, but um, it's my job to try and just keep the girls at ease and yeah, um, yeah, try and make it as natural of a progression as possible, not a forced one. Yeah, yeah, because it's a sh like it's been a shame to see Jess get injured there, like basically near the start of a really promising World Cup season. It's yeah. kind of Shame not to see her at the World Cups yeah. as a result, but also it's super cool to see her turning up and yeah. pushing the limits of the sport like that. So, yeah, it's the balance, I guess, that you've got to get right, get people through it healthy. and Yeah, well, it's hard for the racers because we we're do we paid to race World Cups yeah. technically and there's only one hard line a year. So, you know, if there was a few more, it would 
be you could justify i guess yeah but especially when it's in mid-season for me that was a big one especially as i hadn't done about five or six full seasons before that one so and i was like oh my god i've just come back from a concussion and now i'm doing hardline <laughs> like i had to just like not think about it because yeah. i was like but it felt i only went with my gut feeling this year so and it felt right okay but yeah i was like it is savage when jess hurt herself that put a halt to my week because i was just like we'd ticked off a lot already yeah things were getting a bit silly i think like just <laughs> the things that were getting ticked off were just like i was because like, if we would have kept going i think more would have been done for sure okay. like lou did the on off what's after the on off the 90 and the 100 like it just makes sense like yeah. you just keep going and as long as there's a guy there to tow you in for your first go because you feel that you feel a lot co more comfortable knowing that someone in front of you has done it. I mean, I'd happily follow a girl yeah. and if she had done it 10 times yeah, before. Same with any feature, right? Exactly. Yeah. But it's not the case there at Hardline. Yeah. So, yeah, at that point, I was just like, you know what? I'm really happy with what I've achieved. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. And after that, actually, the wind picked up a lot. So we couldn't really ride anyway. But yeah. And the race never happened. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, yeah awesome. that kind of put a halt to it and was like, geez, like. You're at Hardline, by the way. Like, <laughs> get off your high horse, you know, sit yeah, back down. Just chill, just <laughs> yeah, chill. Yeah, yeah Wales, Wales has spoken. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fair play. So how did you feel like coming off the high of that to seeing probably, I would say, a lack of progression on the Rampage side of things this year? Like no formation, which has been there kind of, from my understanding anyway, like progressing women's riding towards taking part in Rampage and then to see that not happen and Rampage not have any women on the list. Like... Yeah. As someone who's attended formation as well, is that a tough thing to see? It was hard. I guess for me at the time, this sounds not selfish in a way, but I had so such bigger issues going on when formation got cancelled. Like, uh -huh. and, and I got, I do get an open invite to formation every year, which is lovely. I did the first one. Yeah. And Katie always messaged me being like, are you keen to come? Like free ride world is waiting on you. <laughs> and but that you and at that time i was still recovering from my concussion okay. like i still had symptoms so i was just like nope like i'm looking forward to you know just getting my race season that's my always my priority i love racing despite what you know some people may think or it's literally uh, like i love it so much and it's my number one so um yeah at the time i just put that to one side and didn't really think much of it when the news came out that it was cancelled yeah and then when I thought about it and obviously the whole Rampage stuff come out, I was like, shit, like there's no opportunity there for the girls to progress. Yeah. Like that's it. That's the opportunity being taken away. And that's why I think the, you know, the, I think there was a lot of, it's not that the girls want to show that they can, it's so hard to word. Because it's like we just want, at the end of the day, all we want is the same opportunity. Yeah, just, we're not saying yeah. we're going to come out and do a triple backflip or a 90-foot canyon gap. That's not what we're saying. We're saying that there is an audience. And if there's even if there's a small audience, that doesn't matter because you're going to grow that audience. Yeah. And there it goes. It was the same thing for Hardline. I was saying it doesn't matter what we do, really, at the end of the day. What matters is we're there. 100%. And so that the girls that are five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever age or elder women that have kids they're going to see that and they're going to be inspired and be like i want to do that so they're going to then make sure during their life or whatever next decisions they make on their bike that they want to race hardline yeah so that's what the goal is at the end of the day and that was taken away so yeah yeah that was quite savage yeah yeah do you get of any kind of voice in that like as a red bull sponsored athlete and it's a red bull event i don't really know how the whole setup works like are you able to speak to someone at red bull and be like like here's my take on this like it's all a lot more corporate than everyone thinks it's okay. not just red bull that have turned around and been like you can't do that that's yeah. not the case at all because obviously i've gone to red bull uk with my idea for hardline yeah for years they've supported it and you know i can't say a bad word about it because they have supported that and they supported jess and and we did something incredible together so mm. i can't comment on the rampage stuff because i simply don't know but i think I'm not even sure who's in charge or what happens. Okay. But there's obviously been a bit of um, misunderstanding along the way of, and just a bit of dismission to, I guess, the, yeah. the women's side. But it was a shame that formation was cancelled. But like I said, I don't know enough to know why or how. But 
maybe it needed to be more of a competition or maybe the girls didn't want a separate competition to Rampage. Maybe that was the whole point. Like I say, it was at the time, there was a lot going on and that was too much stress for my brain at the time to yeah, take fair. on yeah. or to be involved in. But yeah. I would love to see women at Rampage, obviously. Like it, it, it makes sense, especially now. And if anything, when I saw a lineup to Rampage, I was slightly disappointed. Like there were no new faces, yeah. Um, stuff we've seen before. The lines are all polished now, and it's like a, a kind of like a bit of a slope style event for me. So yeah, I would love to see. I think they are going to a new venue. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah I've heard so, that. But I'd love to see some like core downhill riders. Like you know, we saw Cam Zink, yeah, who who won this year, which was amazing. But yeah, it would be sick just to. I don't know, go back to basics. Freshen it up a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. So if someone had told you 12 months ago that you'd be ticking off features at Hardline, how would you have felt about that? Because you were in a very different spot. I, there's no way. Like I didn't, I couldn't even imagine starting a World Cup or being on my bike, you know. So, well, 12 months ago now I was, well, I, was, I went on my first biking holiday and I could only do like, a couple of runs before like I had to like go back to bed and stuff yeah. so yeah that was hard but that's why the whole hardline stuff was like felt like a massive thing and I I didn't think about it much but I wanted it to happen but that's why I said to everyone at Red Bull that I might not ride and they were like it doesn't matter like your idea of it and how you're presenting it is amazing yeah. we want you to be there we want you to support the girls and that was you know, I had no pressure, so that yeah. was really good, yeah. Yeah, it's a really cool situation. Are we all right to talk a little bit about the concussion? Because I know it was kind of mm -hmm. tough, but I'm sort of intrigued by it. it. I've gone back and listened to a load of interviews and stuff with you, and it feels like even before the concussion, like you were maybe not in an amazing place, right? You had mm -hmm. a lot of back-to-back -back injuries. We talked a little bit about it before we hit record, yeah. actually, like injured, recover, go back to a race, do well, have something else kind of go wrong it feels it feels like and it sounds like and i think i heard you use the word fatigue like leading up to that concussion like mm. things were already pretty challenging right yeah i guess like i've never had any like mental health issues before um i don't even know what year we were in before like 20 21 maybe uh -huh. i had like i think oh i didn't realize that's what it was okay but i'd never like experienced panic attacks or um, anxiety attacks I had like some anxiety but I guess I didn't really yeah. name it that I yeah, don't know yeah. and it felt it feels normal to us because that's literally we're putting ourselves under stress all the time um, and then obviously in 2019 I had my first big injury which was my shoulder um, and then I came back from that got second at Worlds and like everything was great yeah. a few months later I dislocated and broke my leg so I dislocated my ankle that was a big one that was a huge recovery but covid happened so yeah. no one raced until october i came back for a full season i still wasn't that ready and it was uh -huh. like winter so like my <laughs> ankle that was freshly like recovered with metal work in it did not feel good <laughs> but i was actually like for world champs uh, that year i was on it like i, I was one 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 until my crash yeah. so like that everyone was like, oh she's back struggled through the end of the season had a few podiums and then um the following year, I had two slip discs in my neck. And I think that's where stuff really started to go wrong because it's so close to everything. Uh -huh. I was really unhappy all year, tried racing a bit, didn't really get the results I wanted. I did get a, a World Cup win, but, you know, Miriam crashed. And okay. um, I would have got second anyway, which was like a great result. But it's still just to me, I never like winning like that. <laughs> 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 I like everyone to stay on their bike. I yeah. like to win fair and square. Um so but that was a nice thing to have in the midst of all that happening and yeah it just got worse I got more and more unhappy and the worst I did I didn't do that bad I still finished like fourth or fifth overall yeah. but I was went into the off season like nothing is going to stop me because I can't be asked like this is how competitive I was like, I can't be asked not winning again like it's <laughs> shit so I went into that off season I trained really hard and I think I just reached burnout. Okay. It got to a point where looking back now, I I went for, I think every month I had blood tests. I was like, what is going on? I couldn't get out of bed in the morning. Um, looking back, I was probably really depressed as mm -hmm. well. 
Um, obviously, these are all probablys because I never went to go and get checked because I, one was scared probably and okay. two didn't really know what was going on. I, I started having lots of panic attacks yeah, yeah. out of nowhere. Um, didn't feel like something was particularly wrong. Like I'd be in a cafe and then all of a sudden I'd have a major panic attack and I'd have to go out and breathe and um, it just felt a bit weird. Yeah. And then right before the first race of the season in Lourdes, um, I went to the APC centre, which is the Red Bull centre. Yeah. Um, and they did a load of tests. I had a major panic attack there. Couldn't find anything. Went to Lords, got third place, under a second off the win with like a few mistakes. Everyone's like, "Well, ah, she's good." <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. So, and then, yeah, I caught COVID at in Lords. Okay. So I got home, realized I had COVID, spent a few weeks off, went to Banter Jam, yeah. had my concussion. Yeah. And the rest just, it just all blew up. It just, I was definitely burnt out. But that third place in Lords made everyone think and myself think that we yeah. were all good. Yeah, you're just looking for, I guess, someone, something to convince yourself you're okay to keep yeah. going, right? When but you feel like that. I was still struggling a lot. Like I said, all winter I couldn't get out of bed. Um, I didn't want to. I wanted to hide away from the world. It started to get harder and harder for me to go to social events. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was just, and then it, the concussion, I think, was just the straw that broke the camel's back. Dad always says that there was a lot of problems before that. And the symptoms that followed that were horrific. Do you, do you know, I don't know whether you think or know or whether you've had anyone tell, talk to you about this, but can that, like, the condition that you were in before the crash impact the concussion? Sim like, no they, one knows nah. like no one knows it's such like your brain is just a minefield like no one knows um but i think from my experience and what happened to me a hundred percent i think i was at breaking point anyway and it's like when people have burnouts in their like jobs or they just reach breaking point and then you don't see them for months because they literally yeah. can't get out of bed and can't and, um yeah i just think Maybe my symptoms were uh, not worse in any way, but they were as bad as they were because I was already in that part of my brain yeah, struggling yeah, a yeah. lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I didn't have like physical symptoms really. Like I didn't have, so Pom Pom, Miriam Nicole, she's experienced a lot of headaches, mm -hmm. like really bad headaches. I didn't have a single headache throughout my whole concussion. No way. And if I did, it was like, oh, I'm probably dehydrated. I yeah, didn't okay. link headaches because I just didn't have any. Yeah. But I had like, oh, the first ones I had were so bad. They were like, um, I just felt like I was having a constant panic attack. So my heart rate felt insanely high all the time. I felt like I couldn't breathe. Yeah. Um, and just a disassociation and fogginess. So mine was very like behind the eyes kind of. I didn't feel like my body was mine. It was really weird. I'd look at my hands and think, they're not my hands. So... It's like you've been on a wild trip, like. <laughs> yeah. That sounds insane. A bad trip. Yeah, a real bad one. <laughs> yeah. Not a good one. But, um, and that lasted for, yeah, quite a while. It did get better every day, but. Yeah. I remember being so bad, like, like this is horrible, but I said to my mum, because I went back into, like, they said, they explained it as like, I was a baby. I needed to put into bed. I needed them to be there until I fell asleep. I was scared of going to sleep because I didn't want the next day. Like I just didn't want to wake up and experience that again. And I said to mum, if it doesn't get better, I hope you understand. Like if I don't want to live anymore, you know. Wow, it got and that bad. I think for her to hear that. Yeah, that's rough, eh? But she was just really calm with it and like, let's just take it day by day. It's okay, we'll wake up tomorrow, we'll see what we can do. And then um, I remember I managed to make my first tea, like get up, yeah. boil the kettle, put it in the cup. And I was like, yes. We're winning. How yeah. far into it was that then? Because you had like a week where you felt reasonably all right, I think. Yeah, right? And then it sort weird. of ramped in. Yeah, when I crashed, I've not had any experience with concussion. Um, I think, I've not had people around me have had concussion, but yeah. I just thought concussion was like, you hit your head a bit and then after a few days you're all right. I don't know. I had no knowledge. It's kind of what we're brought up to yeah. understand it as, yeah. And like chaos has had a few concussions and now I feel so guilty and horrible because you'd just be like, well, come on then, like get going. <laughs> and like now, oh my God. Yeah, but you yeah, start to understand it, I guess. I, um, yeah, I got better the first week. Every day I got a bit better. Yeah. Rested a bit. And then it's when I went back out on my bike a week later, maybe five, six days later. 
Um, everyone was like, oh, you just got to try and do a small ride, see how you feel. I was just, just on the road. Yeah. And I was with a friend and um, after 40 minutes, I sat down and everything started just not feeling right. Mm. And I was saying, does that look weird to you? Does that look weird to you? And he was like, mm, not really. And I was just like, I think I've got to go home. And I literally got out of my car. I parked at home, got out of my car, crawled to the bed pretty much and just whoosh, lights were out. That was it for like, well, the next nine months. But wow. the first two weeks, sorry, were really hard. Yeah. It was the first two weeks were really, really hard. Yeah. Well, the first three weeks because that first week was okay. fine. And then, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it was after the two weeks that I started doing things for myself. Making a really. cup of tea here yeah. and there. And... But I didn't eat. I couldn't drink for a good like two or three days. Jeez. It was super weird. Yeah. And like obviously, and then my mom had to hold my hand to like go outside because I was scared of what was outside. It seems ridiculous now because like I was actually just doing normal shit the other day and I was like this is mental like because I drove for like three hours straight and yeah. there's just stuff I couldn't do like I would even until not that long ago like mid-season there was still stuff that I was having to put the brakes on I can't do that because my symptoms might flare up yeah so I was like constant limitation on stuff you know wow were you I don't really know how to expect were you aware of like how strange it felt like yeah. that infancy kind of characteristic that you knew that was scary. happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you like it was weird. Tani was still <laughs> there, but there yeah. was like the manifestation of you in the room oh, no. was like this odd thing. Or that's the thing. Tani wasn't there. Yeah, okay. Like it was super, super weird. It was so scary, and like luckily, I had my family there, and I can't. I dread to think what it's like when you're alone. Like. I, I just think that's why there's a high suicide rate, you uh -huh. know, with co concussions and shit. I can fully understand that. But I had people there. I'm a talker, so I like to talk about things. Um, and yeah, without that, it would have been really hard because I was just like, and I felt crazy saying it as well. But okay. And I knew that they would find it hard to understand, but I had to talk to people. Yeah. Because if not, I would have just internalized and it would have made it worse. But I thought I was going crazy. Well, you are, you are going crazy. Well, yeah, basically your brain's like yeah. playing all sorts of tricks on you. I guess it's going through some traumatic It's crazy. Yeah. And then you start thinking about loads of things. When I started to get better, I was like, fuck, people go through that every day without concussion, you know? So, <sighs> yeah, it was, it's just been a very eye-opening experience. What, um, what support do you get as an athlete? Like... I know Red Bull are generally really good with mm -hmm. athletes. They provide a lot of support, like you said, through APC. Yeah. You see a lot of athletes going there and getting help and stuff. But like the whole concussion side of things is still relatively, the science is like improving day by day, but we still don't fully understand it. I think like, was there much there to help you? They tried their very best. Okay. So there's like, obviously with all my physical injuries, I was in and out, done and dusted, yeah. super easy, like, Red Bull got me in and out. Yeah, like the best the surgeons. The best surgeons, yeah. like. And then all of a sudden, I think that's what we expected with my brain injury. And there's just, it's not, there's just not the knowledge there. Like, yeah. I went to some of the best doctors. Well, you know, Red Bull f sent me to some of the best doctors, yeah. but we just couldn't find what it was because you can't see it. Like, And like I said, I didn't have physical symptoms. So like when they tested me, I remember this was so disheartening for me because they tested me on my reactions and like memory and like none of that stuff got affected for me. And I went back into the office and he was like, "Well, those are some of the best results we've ever seen. I was like, and my it's dad not, was not sat what you there. Hear, is it? And he was like, and I was like, I swear to God, like, <laughs> I don't feel right. <laughs> it, was like, it felt, I was just like, I'm not faking this. Like it yeah. feels like I'm getting emotional now because I remember thinking like I wanted to punch a wall. I was like, I, I know my reactions are good. That's not the problem. But yeah. I'm aware that that gets affected in other parts of your brain. And it is a good way to see. But it didn't affect mine. Mad. So how yeah. did you eventually find this place in, was it Zurich? Yeah. Well, I went to, so I went to some of the World Cups. Because mm -hmm. people are like, why are you here? Like, you should be resting. But it's my family. It's my home. So that's where I felt most comfortable. And it didn't bother me to watch the race and at that point I was done with it I was I'm never going to race or ride a bike again so you were that yeah, yeah you were I was that just, over it yeah. I was every time I touched a bike well even when I didn't touch but my symptoms would flare up so yeah. I didn't want anything to do with that okay so 
I was just kind of enjoying get, getting back to normal life. And then I did try and go on a ride. And this was probably about four months later. Okay. And things were going better. I tried to go on a ride. And the moment I got into the pits and put the bike down, a huge panic attack. This was, was that in Lenzerheide? Lenzerheide, yeah, yeah. yeah. And nothing brought it on other than this ride. So I was like, I'm not going crazy. It's not just, it's not just, um, it's not anxiety that's been brought on by an event or something. It's been caused, triggered by this ride. Yeah. So it must be something, I don't know. Do you think it was the fact that you were on a bike or you got your heart rate up? Well, or? see, this is the thing is then I went to see, luckily, Red Bull offer physios for Red Bull athletes on site. Yeah. So I went to go and see Amy, who's one of the Red Bull physios who I love to death and I've seen her loads and I got a neck spasm and I've had neck spasms before because my slip disc, yeah. didn't really think much of it, but this was like instantly after. And as we were talking, I told her about the neck spasm, told her about the panic attack and she was like, it could be that it's something to do with your eyes because at this point she was like, normally a concussion will get better on its own within three months. Yeah. It's like a week to three months. Like that's the, so anything after that, there's something else going on. Okay. So I had obviously learned later post-concussion syndrome. Mm -hmm. She was like, there's something not right with your eyes and brain because yeah. obviously on your ride, you're trying to focus and your eyes will be moving. And that's what causes a neck spasm is because your muscles in your neck like aren't activating and like your, no, sorry, your muscles in your neck are trying to hold your head together rather than your eyes. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. And your eyes aren't stabilizing. Yeah, I might yeah. be talking a load of no, bollocks. that makes sense. I can't remember what she said, but it was something smart. Yeah, no, I, I can understand that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're right. You're, instead of your eyes being able to deal with it, yeah. your neck's trying to yeah, hold your head still. Yeah, yeah. So I gave, So I got a neck spasm and I was like, oh, and she was like, oh, sorry, getting caught up. <laughs> and she was like, um, we've recently had a BMX athlete, um, Sire. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I've never met her, only like, um, talk to her online yeah and she had recently been to the swiss concussion center and had really good results from there uh -huh. so um she was like i'll see if i can you know talk to them and see if you can go and see them anyway she set up for like a few months down the line no a month down the line a couple of days testing and at this point again hadn't touched a bike but every time i didn't touch a bike i started to get better okay and didn't do, I actually tried um, slackline. Okay. Yeah. And no, that made my symptoms go really bad. Ah, because so, it's the balance yeah, thing. Yeah, so and anytime uh, I did yeah. something like that, I realized I got really bad. So I was basically not doing any of the things I loved. So okay. I really had to touch base and start chilling in hammocks and breathing and reading. Those are the only things I could do. But, I, you know, that, again, was a lesson within itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, had some tests and they said that, yeah, there was a load of problems with my eyes. I wasn't using them properly and like, or I was using them too much and I was getting super tired. Honestly, it feels like such a blur, that whole thing. <laughs> I bet. Um, but basically, I felt heard yeah, and I okay. felt seen and they'd seen a load of athletes and they came out and proposed like a schedule and this is what we would do. This is what we think would help. And the doctor said, I don't think you're ready for it now. Okay. I think you should just finish your summer. If you don't mind, she was like, when do you want to compete again? I was like, never. <laughs> and she was like, okay, well, you probably will do once we're done with you. And I was like, nope. <laughs> and she was like, okay, well, there's no rush then. Let's keep healing. Because yeah, she says, yeah. I don't think you're ready to go into intensive stuff yet. So I spent the rest of the summer chilling, um, trying to get better, focusing on all the little things. And then yeah, went there end of end of season. Did five weeks solid. Really, that much? Yeah, like every day. Yeah, I got a place to stay in Zurich. It was an expensive five weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's not a cheap city anyway, is it? <laughs> no, but you can't put a price on your head, you know. No, so 100%. I was all in. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they were great. They were awesome. I did every every other day. I'd go, and there was little things in the day to day life like. I couldn't be there on my own. That was a big step for me. So okay. Cade came to live with me yeah. in Zurich um, for the five weeks. And luckily we were right next to some dirt jumps. So I was like, result. That's perfect. But yeah. he actually had a concussion in the beginning as well. So he was just starting. So he was fine to live with me there for yeah. a bit. But I had to get the train to the hospital and trains made me feel really bad. But because it was only like twice a week in the beginning, like... I started to feel see the progress because that's cool at the, towards the end I could get on the train like three or four times a day and I was fine yeah, so, yeah. Uh, it must have felt so good after 
Where we were like seven, eight months into it by then. Yeah, I had the concussion in April, and I was there in the whole month of se- end of September, October. Wow. Yeah, so we caught the end of a Swiss summer as well, which felt like bliss. It was perfect, perfect environment to to heal, and the yeah. lake there. Yeah, it was awesome. What was it like? All kind of sort of random exercises for your eyes and stuff like. What kind of stuff were you doing to heal? Yeah. So. In the beginning, it was mainly physio. Okay. So a lot of eye exercises. Yeah. Which would be so tiring for me. Um, like I was ev- like doing the physio exercise, I was just sleeping by the lake. Um, and then we were trying to get my tolerance up to go into, I've lost the, the word for it now. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. Cause it's, it's all right. It was like a room with dots in. Uh-huh. And I had to stand and like the wheel turns and it's a dark room and you desensitize over time to it basically so, so they, then the, in real the life the dots are lights are they like moving yeah. around yeah okay and basically you go up levels it starts really slowly and like in the beginning you're like Wah. like you, you fall the same way as, <laughs> but over time you get used to it and then you can be on one leg and then you go on a balance thing and that was i did that intensely just in the last week okay. i was there um and I built up to that with physio exercises. But that's when I really started to notice the difference because I had, so then in real day-to-day life, like in the train when stuff was going past me, uh-huh. in my vision, it didn't upset my brain. Yeah. Same when I was on the bike. So I started to go on the electric scooters, notice that it didn't do anything. Um, I didn't have a bike with me. We got my heart rate up, realized that that was nothing to do with my concussion. Again, Miriam, her yeah. concussion, all to do with her heart rate in the beginning. Yeah, I know yeah. she's had other issues now, but... Yeah, mine was nothing to do with my heart rate. So I started exercising again on the static bike. And then stuff just slowly started to get a lot better. And But at the time, yeah, I was celebrating every step I could. I bet that must have felt yeah. incredible to see that fog sort of lift that you've been stuck under yeah. for so long. Yeah, that was just exactly was such a good description because the fog was like right there for so long. And... Yeah, Zurich really helped me feel like a functioning human being again. And That's then best money you've ever spent. Yeah, yeah, no, it has been actually way better than than a flash car. Could have got a really nice car for that. <laughs> oh, really? We're talking that kind of money. Fair play, but no, like you say, it's your health and your well being in your head. It's yeah. pretty important, isn't it? No, it was um, so worth it. Unfortunately, now they're not there. No way. So I think they're still trying to operate, but the hospital there was some like politics of. Ki- kick them out of their space i think they're still trying to work but loads of people have asked, like a lot of people um had asked where i went and yeah. they could go and they've been and but yeah pom pom tried going and it's kind of dotted all over now it's not in one Strange. space so i think they're trying their very hardest to get back yeah because obviously it's it's saved people it Sound, saved yeah. me so. sounds like we need it especially as a sport like we're seeing more yeah. and more i don't know if it's as the speeds go up or what but we're definitely seeing more or have more awareness of these like longer term yeah. concussions. So yeah, hopefully places like that continue to exist. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Did you find other stuff? Need a sip of yeah, get a sip on the chamomile tea. Yeah. <laughs> Did you find other things that work for you personally? Like um, I don't know, meditation, journaling. I know you, you like you do quite a lot of art and stuff as well. Yeah, so weirdly my creative side just died off though. Really? My concussion. Yeah, yeah. I tried, but it didn't really help. And I am like, I really like doing arts and crafts, but it, it provided to be a bit too much. Uh-huh. Um, in the beginning, all I could do was breathe. And um, so, and even that felt like a task. So I started doing a five minute thing a day on, okay. um, this isn't sponsored, on Headspace. Yeah, yeah. It was a really good app for me. So yeah, um, yeah I started doing, because it was guided as well and I didn't know what to do and it was just a voice to listen to. Yeah. But I could only manage about five minutes before I'd start freaking out. So I did that and then would do it twice a day and then I'd do it three times a day. And then I just got better and better at it. And then um, eventually, yeah, just implemented it into my everyday life and realized that that's what helped most. I saw at the time I had like three psychologists, well, a psychiatrist, a psychologist yeah. and a lovely neighbor that was like this uh, women's health advocate and like a psychologist that, and she did a load of stuff and she was a bit different to your usual and I yeah. love that sort of stuff and like had like crystals and uh, <laughs> nice. you're like nice. 
yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I've but, had some chats with Sam Dale about crystals. But I'm, when, uh, you I'm go, intrigued. when you're that low, yeah. honestly, you try anything. Yeah. I mean, it's just what sticks with you, you know? So, but she was lovely and she helped a lot as well. And she was just down the road. So that became a routine as well. It's like, oh, I can. Cool. And in the beginning, my mum would walk me there and yeah. then. I'd walk back on my own and then eventually I'd just walk there on my own. And see, those are all the little things that I noticed. But yeah. the meditation helped a lot. Yeah. I do a lot, some breath work now. I actually stopped recently and picked it back up and it helped massively. And being in a hammock, which I still found so weird, but I would could not wait to be in my hammock every day when I woke up. And I'm not sure if it's because it like cradles you and you feel like a baby again. Yeah. And But I would go into the woods. I couldn't walk very far, obviously, but find some trees and just chill put your hammock up yeah and then we i would get some paper out and draw the leaves that i could see past some time yeah couldn't really be on my phone much it's not a bad so, thing no it was not well now i'm like i'm on it all the time and i'm just like how did i <laughs> how did i not do that so what stuck out of all of this the meditation a little bit so funny you say because nothing stuck for a while like once i started to get better it's like anything you do just drop all the habits yeah. and it started to stress me out a little bit over summer i mean some stuff did stick um like my routine and the way i am now and how i changed as a person and yeah. no pressure and all that that really helped me through the season um but yeah i didn't really meditate as much it felt like didn't need it it's not like i was oh, i don't need it. i'm not gonna do it it's just you get so caught up and the last thing you think about doing is breathing even though you know but yeah i got back from the season and I could feel a low level of anxiety kind okay. of simmering. And I haven't experienced it since the concussion. Yeah. But I think it was more just my nervous system being a bit, I've gone from such, well, low levels of adrenaline for a year and a half Yeah. to go into really high again. And I knew that would be a problem, but I wanted to race. So I was like, I'm just going to do it and I'll see how I feel in the season. And yeah, I got guided through with a breathwork coach that I've seen a couple of times or a few times and um to reset the nervous system yeah okay and i was walking around after like has it worked like kind of like asking a load of, like i'm always in my head always and i was like do i feel anxious i was like well let's try and make myself feel anxious and then we'll see if it's worked and i'm just like wait what are you doing <laughs> and i was like just tried to forget about it and then Cade later that evening was like you seem in a lot better mood i was like oh it's worked nice <laughs> like, That's yes, cool. hooray. yeah but i knew it would work yeah because breathing is like the ultimate thing to just calm yourself. Yeah, it's very hard to be stressed if you're breathing fully and properly. I exactly. Think. Yeah. Well, you can't, it's literally impossible, but you're put off by it because you're like, you're stressed and you're scared. So the last thing you want to do is like calm down or sit with your thoughts. Yeah. So, yeah. Mad. I'm not sure where this fits in the timeline of all the kind of injuries and the concussion and stuff, but I heard that at some point along the way, you had some treatment from one of the superstars of our sport, Missy Jovi. Yeah, well, that was before actually. That was when I see. That was when I was like not good. Yeah. We think about it now, and like I was still before my concussion. I was not doing very well. But yeah, so Missy Geo was into all the breathing and crystals and all that stuff. But at that time, I wasn't really. So I didn't really know this was all new to me. And uh -huh. she did like a a breath work, like uh, like maybe half hour with me or like to an hour because she was like, dude, you need to like. You need to chill out. Like, I've got what you need and stuff. And she's like, let's go. Like, this was like at 10 p.m. before race day. <laughs> and like, she took me like outside. This is a snowshoe as well. There's like bears everywhere at night. Like all the bins. Are, and I'm like your typical English girl that like doesn't really. Like, I know I'm outside all the time, but I was like shit scared. Yeah. And I was like, Missy, what about the bears? She's like, nah, they won't get us. I've got my crystals. I was like. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want to rely on a crystal. Excuse me. <laughs> and at the time, I wasn't into that stuff. I just yeah. didn't have an understanding. Now, looking back, I, like if that was me now, I'd be like, oh, yeah, we'll be fine. Whereas <laughs> before, I was just like, are you joking? <laughs> and then we like laid down on the grass. And I was obviously stressed to fuck because I thought these bears were going to come and eat me. <laughs> and Missy was so chill. And she took me through this breath work, which I think now I'd appreciate a lot more. Okay. But I was just so stressed at the time. <laughs> I was so stressed. I was so scared. Waiting for the bear getting attack. Getting eaten by a bear, yeah. And then we did some um, like chanting and stuff together, which was all very eye-opening to me. But an experience I'll never forget for yeah. sure. And like so honoured because obviously the legend that is Missy Geov. Yeah. 
and um yeah but like i said i think i appreciate it a lot more now yeah your eyes have opened to all that yeah. stuff i guess i've yeah. spotted a crystal over on the side there so yeah i'm wearing one now actually yeah do you yeah. do you f is it do you f feel that or is it a belief do you know what i mean like do you feel better when you have one with you i don't think i question it okay. really i haven't had a crystal on me ever i just saw it as a necklace the other day and it looked nice so i was yeah. like oh and like it was like a certain crystal i was like i'll give it a go but i don't think like when i put it on i'm not like oh my god it's so good like yeah, i feel yeah. so much better it's just a little what's the word not a passion but a little hobby i guess yeah interesting <laughs> i was i was chatting to sam dale about it because he's into all that yeah up at fort william a couple of years ago and we were staying at that linny holiday place mm -hmm. caravan place on yeah. the edge of the lock and there's a there's a like a uh crystal place real near there and i was like well maybe this is a thing like maybe i should go and get one <laughs> i was like how do i know which one i need and he's like it, you'll know like pick a <laughs> few up cool. and see which one feels right and i was like all right i will and then i went on the monday morning on the way home and it was shut it doesn't, oh, doesn't open well, on monday so i need that's to go your back, calling. No. To go back. <laughs> or maybe i should have no crystals yeah that's your calling <laughs> no i think i'm just very into like energy flows mm. and like i think you know i'd I think it would be naive to not think there's more than just us. So, yeah, yeah I'm just very into that stuff. And like, I sense someone's energy when they walk in, but I'm not all like, you know, I don't know. I don't want to offend anyone, you know, <laughs> but I'm, I don't know. I'm just aware. I feel like yeah. I, I just, I, and I like that stuff. And I'm very interested in other people's beliefs. That's so cool. I'll yeah. always be open to, yeah, to willing, hearing it willing. out. And, yeah, yeah. That's and yeah a good, I think it's interesting. Definitely. It's a good place to be. So it sounds like you were like off of, exercise for a good chunk yeah. of time and I, I was again i was saying before we hit record like i've had some fatigue issues over, over the last four or five months and like i've found that side of it pretty hard and i'm not an athlete like my body's gone to shit and i feel pretty awful and i'm just starting to get back to it slowly but how was it for you to like have go from being an athlete to not being able to do anything and then like where does the motivation come from to then start like rebuilding yourself I guess that must have been pretty tricky I guess like because being an athlete is my sole focus it's like the only thing I have to do it's a lot easier for someone like me that that's what I'm paid to do it must be so much harder for someone so for people who have normal jobs because that's not your only focus mm. I guess um so I can turn around and be like well I'm going to dedicate this much time to feeling good but it doesn't. It's not always that easy in a way that you just solve the problem by being like, "Oh, I've got an issue here. I'm going to solve it." Um, and I guess being fatigued for my job as well is kind of annoying because you need to be on top of your game all the time, and you yeah. don't want to sit in a start gate or be riding your bike when you're not feeling great. So I take I took a lot of time off my bike because I'm I go off feel a lot as well, and I'm always. It's like maybe I over obsess a little bit, but if something's wrong in my body, it doesn't feel right. I need to get it sorted or uh -huh. I need to give it attention and I don't want to push it. Or I don't want to make that matter worse. So it's kind of a bad cycle in a way sometimes. It's a blessing and a curse because yeah. I know when something's wrong. Um, but yeah, like I said, maybe a bit of an over obsession sometimes. But yeah. but yeah, like I said, it's been since 2019 that I've experienced like cuts in my season time off um but i think i like taking the time off to make sure my body is good and healthy uh -huh. but yeah it reached a point where it was just too much breaking point yeah but like i said i think and i needed something to actually breaking point because i would have kept going after that lord's result yeah like i said that off season i was like i'm gonna win this season I, like i can't be asked anymore i just want to win everything <laughs> i'm going hard yeah <laughs> all or nothing i've always been a bit of an all or nothing girl but yeah i guess i don't know when did you know you were ready then when did you like decide right tani's back we're gonna go racing like I i'm gonna start rebuilding towards this thing that i used to love and now i feel like i love it again because it yeah you said you didn't want to be near a bike or ride yeah. a bike again well it wasn't really like that i wasn't like oh, i'm gonna race next season i really didn't know like i had okay. to have some serious chats with some sponsors obviously yeah um I'm going to admit probably at the time was a bit delusional and maybe not lied because, but I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll get back on the bike. But then would like turn around and be like, oh my God, like, <laughs> am I? Like, I don't know. But 
It was at Worlds in the Jay. Yeah. When I'd obviously won the year before, and that for me is my like home. Yeah. My second home. And for the first time since all of this, so much emotion came up. Like I'd been quite neutral until then when it came, well, just racing haven't bothered me. Yeah. When obviously congrats to Valley, but when Valley crossed the line and she won, like I'm a competitor, like I'm not going to deny how I feel when I see someone win at my dream place. <laughs> obviously I would never take that away from someone. I think it's so well deserved uh -huh. for anyone that win, wins worlds. I've never won an elite world champs. So I think there's a lot of emotion there. Yeah. And I had to walk away and go into the lorry and that's, you see it on how we roll the series that the team's done. Yeah. I just broke down and like, it was mainly because it wasn't because I couldn't be there and couldn't win. It was mainly because I had the feeling that I wanted to be there, but I was scared of wanting to be there. Is that the conversation you're having with your dad in the truck? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize the context of where that was in yeah. the season, but I know the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So, cause that was the conversation was, um, like I was scared. Like what if I come back? I don't yeah. want to come back and be scared. Yeah. I know I'm going to be scared. I don't want to hit my head again. What if I hit my head again? But I think without knowing it, that was the first part of that journey. I needed to go through that because that was a little spark being like, you want to do this again because you obviously see someone win at your home track and it pisses you off <laughs> yeah. like, and it makes you sad. Yeah. So, you know, I knew because as well along this journey, I've been worried that maybe I lost my fire, or lost my competitiveness. And like, I think that does sometimes come across because I'm trying to be calm and cool, uh -huh. but I can reassure everyone <laughs> that like there is definitely a a desire in there ready to come out but it's just i've been trying to just calm it a bit but i think yeah it was just a natural progression after that after the zurich thing i tried riding because it's all i know what to do and i guess i wanted to yeah. so got back on the bike i went on holiday with phoebe my teammate and my best friend yeah um and we um yeah, she was really cool with that. When we were in Barcelona, we did like one day on, one day off, one day on. One. I said to her, I'm not going to write much. She was cool because she wanted a holiday in Barcelona too. <laughs> so um, yeah, she had to drive sometimes. So I was too tired to uh, really patient with me. But again, we rode downhill for the first time. And I just made sure I shared it with people that I felt comfortable with. And I knew I wasn't going to be judged or, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, sometimes I feel like a duty to be Tane Seagrave and that's you know the this persona and image that I have for racing yeah. which is not fake in any way whatsoever but it's this strong independent fired up individual and and Tane is just like pretty chill and doesn't really care about that <laughs> shit so that was something as well we had to work on getting those two people to come together and not feel like they were battling yeah because yeah I think, yeah, I don't know. We just, It was just such a natural progression. And I was so lucky to be given, well, not given, but um, to have that time. Yeah, okay. And give myself. But I was quite harsh with other people and I needed that time. I, I know a lot of people don't understand this journey, but this is my journey and this is how much time I need and this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, it's been good to have, I guess, not only, I mean, your team to a greater extent is your family. So I guess that mm -hmm. helps. But also you've got almost all your sponsors you have quite long-term relationships with. So having that must have been yeah. pretty beneficial because I'm guessing the conversations are not always easy because you don't know yeah. when you're going to be back. You need this chunk of time. Well, especially in the beginning, I couldn't have those conversations. I just had to tell dad, I was like, you need to tell them all that I'm out. Yeah. Like that's it. For this season, I'm out. Like I'm not doing anything. If I want to do something, I'll be the one to like instigate it. But yeah. I was like, I'm sorry, but I need this time. Like, There's no other way of doing it for me. And yeah, it was scary. And yeah, I might have been dropped or they might have got rid of me. But at the time, I literally couldn't have cared less because I was like, yeah. I, like, there's, like I said, there's no other way for me to do it. And yeah. if I want to get better, and then maybe when I come back around, like we'll figure that out then. I was like, that's what dad always said as well. You know, we'll figure it out when it comes. Because I was scared in the beginning. Like, of oh, course. If they drop me, you they know that's not good for the team and stuff like that but there's always a way yeah, always a way <laughs> yeah it's good you got good people behind you um i heard you say again in an interview that you were pre this concussion like you were your own bully in your head you mm. were quite um 
harsh on yourself even if you won that wasn't enough and you kind of i want to win by more or whatever it happens to be and like i'm interested in what it's taken to change that like narrative in your head because i feel like i could benefit from being nicer to myself yeah. a lot of the time and i'm sure there are plenty of other people out there that feel the same way yeah i think a lot of people that are driven in a way are kind of have that bully inside them ha- their head a lot of successful people i think it's necessary to a certain point yeah it's helpful up to a point yeah right? yeah um like it was very helpful for me to win those world cups and you know get those con- like those seven world cup wins in two seasons like that was amazing but i wasn't particularly like aware of myself or like mm-hmm. what i was doing i was so driven and like that like that success wouldn't have come without it but i was going to i feel like you it was inevitable to reach burnout okay. if you continue like that cuz nothing was ever good enough like and i was consistently just horrible to myself or wasn't never like my body never looked like an athlete or like you know just stuff like that like so i'd start eating different or um i wasn't going in the gym hard enough there was not a single time where i would like not do anything everything on my gym session even if i felt like shit even if it was like a period week i would still do everything on that gym session because if i walked out not doing it that feeling to me felt disgusting yeah i'm not like that at all now that's good (laughs) but even yesterday see just yesterday i was like shit like maybe i don't have enough discipline now i'm like i'm like maybe and i'm like nah let's not go down that road again like you've done your part like i know what it's like to work hard like yeah you know i I used to it's not like this is just relative to me obviously in my story but um i used to get up before school and go on the turbo for an hour at 5 a.m get to school fall asleep throughout all my lessons get back (laughs) back from school at 6 p.m go to the gym until 7 go back home and you're just a kid at that age like you shouldn't be doing that stuff but that's what i wanted to do yeah because i wanted to win world cups so i wanted to be world champion and i appreciate that side of me so so much but yeah it just got so obsessive and ridiculous like i wouldn't go out and meet people because i didn't want to change my gym time because Uh that was the most like the best gym time for that day and then i could recover for four hours it was just like and that every day like i'm tired speaking about it's it. like, like an it's obsessive just annoying. Yeah, yeah yeah obsessive thing how do you break that cycle things it's super easy to just get stuck in that on repeat right well i guess i was stuck in it until the concussion yeah until i had to slow down like like i said at one point all i could focus on was breathing because if not anything else would flare up my symptoms i'd start to feel horrible like i didn't want to feel like that so i was like let's just focus on the here the now what we can do to make you feel better and that was literally just lying down on the sofa listening to my mum's conversation or so I was forced like I can't this is the problem is I don't actually have the the advice because I wouldn't have like I wouldn't have done it but life's like clockwork you'll go through like the the highs and the lows and I would love like I do tell people advice I'm like slow down like sit back relax enjoy it like savor every moment but it's so much easier said and it's almost annoying coming from someone because i've been sat there in that position and like well you try chilling out if like you know so yeah i think you just have to go through what you've got to go through right. so that ch- the change purely came from what you've experienced in the last year it wasn't like i'm going to work with a psychologist on this like or maybe there's a bit of yeah. everything there but no i did work with a psychologist yeah. and it helped a lot okay but I feel like it's just rearranging the problems in a way. Yeah, yeah. Like I was still, that was still my personality. My personality was, well, I was just beating myself up. And if I didn't win, it wasn't good enough. And if I did win, if I only won by like less than a second, that was definitely not good enough. (laughs) And I want to win by more than X. But then I wonder, was it my competitiveness and the competition I had with Rachel that led me to be like that? Because we were like it was like battle of the titans like in that era yeah and i was like i look back now i'm like fair play i raced the goat at her best so you know people come to me now oh tiny hasn't won in ages like this that, and the other. i'm like i did beat rachel though so <laughs> yeah, <come> on, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> no, give me some credit <laughs> but no she was at her like she is the goat and still is so yeah um 
if there was a time to win, I feel like that was pretty good. Obviously, I want to win again. Yeah. But I feel like maybe sometimes the fire's not there because I don't have that rivalry anymore and I need that vi- rivalry. But again, I've learned that about myself. But I have to be careful because I'm like, it's not that healthy. Yeah, you know where it takes you, I guess. You're yeah. more aware of it. Yeah, yeah that's good. So, but, yeah. Has your relationship with results changed? I think I've always been quite good with re- results. I know it sounds a bit contradicting because I'm like, oh, that first wasn't good enough ever. But to me, nothing was ever good enough. So it wasn't like, oh, I don't know. I'm not bothered about the result if I've put my very best in. Okay. And I do that every single round. So I'm never that pissed. I just want more. Yeah, okay. I'm just driven to have more. It's like, okay, well, what can I do that will be better for next time? Yeah. I'll always give my best. Like, I can never be angry at my results because, I'm like, yeah, shit goes wrong, but shit goes wrong for everyone. So I made a mistake here. You can't, as well, I think if you accept that you can't have a perfect run. And if it does happen, then fair play. Yeah. But... Most of the time, you know, a downhill run for four and a half minutes, something's going to happen. And I feel like if there doesn't, you just haven't remembered it. <laughs> yeah, you were too in the flow. Yeah. How has it been then? Like, e- I guess you eased yourself back into it this year. You wouldn't, you weren't going into the first round expecting to win. Mm-mm. How no. was it? Um, It was great. Like, it was scary. I had my own goals in the way and my own... Actually, I didn't even have any. Well, my goal was to just, the first one was to just be there and have my bike. I was like, I might not even ride. I might get to the start gate and be like, I'm not ready. Yeah. I'd done a handful of days on the downhill bike. I'd been to New Zealand for the first time Uh ever. So it felt like a natural progression. Yeah. And in Lenzerheide for the first race of the season, I couldn't, like every day was just, I loved being on my bike. I was like, I just couldn't believe it, I guess. So yeah. And then I, literally that is the first race of my career where I just did not care I was just like I came down couldn't believe that I qualified and then couldn't believe that I made it through to the finals through semis because obviously we had that additional semis yeah. this year which worried me a lot going into the season because I hadn't trained at all <laughs> so there was no expectations so I know that was probably hard for the team as well because obviously the team's just a family run team we don't have a lot of money invested and for sponsors but and everyone understood that was part of the process. I was this time round. I'm not just going to come back from a physical injury and be right up there straight yeah, away. Yeah. It's not how this is done. So yeah, did it help having Rachel there, or did it hinder having well, Rachel? Well, there? no. This is the thing. I didn't care. Okay, that was that was just uh, that wasn't part of my journey at that point. Yeah. So I was happy to see her on track. It was cool. Yeah, it was really really cool, and it felt like old times. But I didn't have. I wasn't annoyed. I wasn't pissed. So like, I wouldn't go back down to the pits and be like, Rachel's doing this. Like, I didn't care. I didn't care what anyone else was doing. That must have felt really nice. Like, It was relieving in a way, yeah. but it's not how you win races. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play. Let's talk about Fort William because uh, I saw you there trackside through practice and it looked to me anyway that you and Valley were kind of on another level compared to the other women on the track that week. Like, did you feel that? How are you feeling at Fort William? Oh, that means a lot. Thank you. Um, it was weird because Fort William was what started everything for me as in injury wise. Because in 2019, that's where I did my shoulder. shoulder. Yeah. In the leader's jersey. In the leader. First time I ever had the number one play. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd just come off the back of winning the first World Cup in 2019. And yeah. So, sorry. <coughs> that was... Um, an emotional one to go back to. I hadn't raced there since 2018. So in a way I was like, it's been, what were we in? It's been five years since I'd like big did a full race run here. Yeah. Like ridden really. Cause I only did a few corners in 2019 before <laughs> yeah. I fucked myself. So <laughs> I was like, I'm quite excited for this. And then I've got Phoebe that loves that track. And I'm not going to lie. I was a bit nervous cause Phoebe's still like, I love Phoebe and I want to do well, but she's still the young one of the team. And like this year, obviously for me, wasn't about, performing uh-huh. to a certain point but I still felt like I had to stand my ground on where I was at <laughs> and I just got so stuck in at Fort William and I think I was just in a flow state all week long and I think again I wasn't asking what other people looked like but then 
vital and 510 put out the video of me in valley and i was like i look good i was like i didn't feel a particular way but yeah. i can tell through my riding like when you're riding i can't i feel good but you don't always know you know like, i have no idea what's been especially after the year i've had yeah i was just loving it and i felt strong but yeah i saw the videos and i was like that's good <laughs> but again you don't really know and then i had that huge crash in my qualifying yeah what happened that was such a strange thing like yeah. i was stood right at the bottom there and it like you went down with a lot of force yeah that was that's the biggest crash of my career for sure i thought i was dead i thought when i knew i wasn't dead i thought my arm was not on and then my arm was still on and i was like well it's for sure broken into a million pieces yeah. but it wasn't so because you kind of wrapped it over the barrier right like, honestly like... i've never had physical pain like it like yeah. i've broken my femur and that was nowhere near <laughs> as much as that bruise on my arm like the wow. impact was as it hit the barrier I was like, in the air, everything went into slow-mo. I didn't care where I landed at that point. I was still flying through the air. I yeah. was about to land on concrete on my back, but that didn't even go through my head. I just stared at my arm through the air thinking like, that's a Ken Roxon style injury. I was like, that's it. That's done. Like, that's obliterated. Yeah. And then you see in the video when I get out, I check to see if my fingers are still on. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah, that happened. I guess I knew I had a good run. Yeah, yeah. And that was after the first block of racing. So I'd already done three races and I knew what the, I know what the flow state feels like, but I, know, I wasn't sure if I could get there again, especially not this season. Yeah. But in that qualifying run, I was like, that was a fucking good run. I think I just took my eyes off the ball for a, a split second, especially as I was scared in four winning because it's so long, so physical. I didn't know if I was going to make it to the, well. Because of where your fitness barely was Barely did. Yeah, yeah. So I think I was just a bit excited that I was like, fuck, I don't even feel that tired. You know, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And then they changed the the hip into that arena and I got close to the barrier a few times and I hate myself for this because I even said the day before, is anyone getting close to that barrier? Because I'm getting really close. And then that happened. Yeah. I think it's always the way. But yeah, I just, um, I think, I don't want to say there's a bit of wind because there might not have been. <laughs> <laughs> but I have no idea why I went so far right. And yeah, I, in the air, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to hit the barrier. So you see me go a bit like that. Yeah. Because I maybe could have ridden it out if I hadn't have gone to the side of my bike a bit. So yeah, I kind of pushed my bike to one side and but the wheels like landed on like the bit of the barrier that kind of pokes out. And then I thought I saved it for a second and then... I hit like obviously the steps isn't there at the end of yeah. I hit the step and my feet clipped out and it was horrendous Horrible. the pain after that I went into the medics and like could not sit still it was like impossible I was like not screaming but grunting a lot <laughs> and then he like touches it a bit so painful and the doctor goes well it's not broken so and I was just like excuse me what <laughs> I'm not gonna lie like that doctor was really nice, but I wanted to punch him in the face. <laughs> I was like, you can't be serious. There's no way. So like, there's no way it's not broken. Yeah. I said, I looked at my dad, nearly crying, but like, he's lying. He's, this guy's lying. <laughs> Again, like like the doctors before, I'm not lying. I promise it hurts. <laughs> this is really broken. Yeah. But yeah, he was like, oh, do you want some paracetamol? I was like, paracetamol? I was like, no, I need some morphine. <laughs> I need to go into surgery to fix his arm. But it was fine. Well, it wasn't fine, obviously. I think if you've seen the photos and the videos yeah, it of it. it's horrible. There was a lot of fluid in there for yeah. a while. But yeah, the uh, at the time, actually, when we were assessing the arm, I got upset and I was like, what's the point? Like, I'm trying. Like, I'm not even at my best. And I'm still, I'm having gnarly crashes because I had one in Leergang yeah. as well. And I was like, what's the point? Like, I'm just putting myself in so much danger for nothing. For what, a 10th place? And then Elliot, our manager, comes in. He's like, oh, well done on your second, though. That was sick. And I was like, what? He goes, you got second? I was like, no, I didn't. I was like, you did? I was like, well, I guess we'll just try again tomorrow then. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, like a switch. <laughs> yeah. It's so bad, though. But yeah, I was in a lot. It took a lot. But I felt like I wasn't trying to prove anything to anyone. I just felt like that was the mental strength I needed to show myself to be like we've got this we're not yeah. who we were um, a year ago we're not letting the mental health take over we we've got this we're strong we can do it it's uncomfortable it hurts it's disgusting we don't want to do it but we're gonna go and do it yeah so i didn't care again i would have loved to have win and i felt like i probably could have done and 
I mean, everyone can say that, but I felt like I had a good chance of fighting for the stripes. Yeah. So that does feel a bit, uh, when I think about it, but that's the type of thing I need going forward. So Gives you some hunger, I guess, right? Because yeah. like you say, you're still hunting the elite stripes. So. Well, I go to think, like, if I'm not off the back of something really scary, shitting myself in the start game. I used to be fired up in the start game. I used to be like, I'm going to go as fast as I can. I don't care. Now I'm like, mm, I'm not sure about this. <laughs> Let's just make it to the bottom. No training. And to be on like a similar pace in sections, if not faster in some sections, to me was really nice. It was a nice feeling. And I yeah. thought, you know what? Let's just take this season. That After that crash, I was like, let's not get carried away. Even though I did multiple times after that. And let's just do it race by race. Yeah. Worked yeah. out. Worked out all right. Yeah. And you got your pink Fox 40s. Yeah. Well, I gave them away, didn't I? But did you? <laughs> we did a giveaway on them, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they were so nice. The bikes did look very they cool. They were really pretty. Yeah. Well, in the beginning when Dad was like, yeah, we're doing... Because I didn't know. Because the Canyon stuff, they like to do like a... Everyone gets the yeah, same... Yeah, it's like a theme across yeah. all of the teams, right? Which is cool. But obviously I'm really creative and like... That's creative too, but I mean, I like to have the creative lead on my stuff. Yeah. So I'm always, and then I'm like, oh, and then we've got to work with the red, white, and blue and um, somehow make that work. And then Dan was like, yeah, the bikes are yellow. Your bike's yellow and pink. I was like, <laughs> really? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, when it was getting built up, I was just like, oh my God, don't look, don't look. And then the pink fox went on and I was like, that looks cool. Now we're, now yeah. we're rocking. Dad kept saying, trust me, trust me. I was like, nah, not having it. And I guess the kit choice is out of your hand as well, right? Because Fox, again, did like a theme across mm -hmm. all the efforts and it was super cool, but like you've had all your, you're used to having this creative input and suddenly it's been taken away at like the biggest event of the year. Yeah. Well, that was the one that I used to have because that was the one time I could get a custom kit. Ah, uh, okay. So Worlds would be the one that I did have a creative lead on, but I don't mind. I'm like, it's quite nice to represent your country and like being in the same kit as Phoebe and the other guys, you know, it was, it's a nice thing to do. Yeah. Um. I'm like, oh, if it's one race a year, it's all right. Let them have it. Let them have it. It, it looked good, mate. It looked good. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the changes. One of the potential like benefits, I guess, of mountain bike being shown to a wider audience mm -hmm. is more out of industry support. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that you've you've already got some good relationships there. Like I've seen you with some Land Rover bits and pieces, Moncler mm -hmm. maybe sent you some bits and bobs, like. Are you personally starting to see signs for more opportunities for out of industry stuff? Or do you think we're still a, a bit away from like what Eurosport can help us with in that like growth wise? To be honest, I haven't seen any change. I okay. feel like those deals have come from my Instagram presence mainly. Okay. Um, yeah. Where do we go? With this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to make it. Yeah, if, if it's uh, no, tricky. No, it's then. fine. It's just, um, I haven't, seen any change on that front okay i feel like the world champions are always going to get um outside endorsements and stuff which is super cool yeah but the athletes work really hard themselves and i think people who have got outside deals isn't because of the the new format we have no maybe sure. in future yeah but definitely not right now and if okay. anything i'm not sure if it's got better or worse okay yeah i felt like i felt like that sort of stuff was going to take a few years. I was just yeah. wondering because I knew you had relationships outside the industry anyway, whether you'd heard anything, but it sounds like we're not not starting to move along yeah. that path just yet. No, I think maybe the live feed needs a bit of adjusting and tweaking before it's something that's relatable and watchable because mm -hmm. at the moment I'm just not sure it is. Okay. What do you think is holding it back? Like, I think... <laughs> Before, with Red Bull TV, there was a good storyline. Okay. You know, like like I said, when I was racing Rachel, they made it into a massive thing. Yeah, yeah. Same with People, G and Stevie exactly. and all these kind of People battles. People wanted yeah. to watch and they got to know the athletes really well. Yeah. If you came in now and started watching Down or you wouldn't have a bloody clue what's gone on with people. And I know uh -huh. you don't get that with many sports, but Downhill isn't many sports and we're open to change definitely like yeah. i was really excited for the new format i think things can always be worked on red bull tv did a great job but there's always things you can do better for sure and you know if we were like oh bigger company maybe more money into the sport that would be great um 
But I guess it was always going to be hard the first year. And I think a lot of us were like, let's just see how it goes. There's been, you know, I think it can go the right way and it can be done properly. And I think there's a lot of things this year that were done really well. Yeah. But on the other hand, there's a lot that just didn't really work with either athletes, fans. You know, I know a lot of fans are upset. Um, a lot of the athletes are upset. Yeah. Again, for me, that was too stressful to think about. <laughs> like I'm out of this. So yeah. I was like, I'm just going to race my bike. I'm happy to be here, which in a way was kind of a bit shit at some points. Uh-huh. But we had no say anyway. Like we tried to have a say. Yeah. And we've got the Riders Association now. But I just feel like in a year where there's so much shifting and there's apparently a lot of money involved, like I don't feel like we're, our voices will be that heard. Okay interesting hopefully that improves it'd be interesting to see what changes they put in place for 2024 because it feels like there's a lot of mutterings around semi-finals not being part of it i I I don't think many people would would love for them to get rid of (laughs) semi-finals but i just don't think it's gonna i don't know obviously like i don't know what's going on behind scenes yeah but i'm guessing so this is all like don't take my words for facts but i'm guessing that they've sold tv time and they're expecting a certain amount of TV time. They only want 30 riders in the final. Yeah. And with that, they wouldn't have enough TV time. So bring in the semifinals. But they could show more of our runs. Yeah. Like they don't show much of the women's runs. I've heard. I haven't watched it back. Uh-huh. But I've heard that the women's is pretty shit in comparison to the men's. Like there's right. not much of our runs shown. So they could take more time and detail into like making more of a show hmm. rather than just the racing part yeah um yeah i don't know we could still keep it to 30 and ditch the semis but i'm not sure many riders would be happy with that you know but what would you rather <laughs> yeah who knows yeah. i just i don't think semis on race day doesn't work yeah. our race day is so hectic we don't even know when finals is we have like um the hype's gone by the time final comes around you know it's all a bit confusing and yeah i think some people like it but I wouldn't mind it if it just wasn't on the same day. We're missing that finals day hype. Like there's, you yeah. don't wake up and go finals day now. You wake up and go, oh, semi-finals, maybe you get through <laughs> to finals day. Yeah. We don't know yet. Not quite sure what it is. <laughs> yeah. We might wake it through, we might not. Like, yeah. So yeah, the whole, the sick thing about downhill was that one run only. And I'm obviously going to push for that because I'm good at that. I'm good at the one run. Yeah. But I'll adapt if it needs to be adapted. Like I did, okay this season but it was exhausting and we have blocks now we have like three races back to back yeah a bit of a rest and then another so that was quite difficult but again we all want more races we want to see more races we're just not so keen i say we like i'm sure the majority agree but i don't know where it stands yeah i've not spoken to anyone yet who wants to keep semis but i haven't spoken to everyone yeah so yeah i'm sure there are some people out there that yeah like gel with it maybe it helps them get up to speed a bit more i don't know what it might Mm. be but yeah wasn't didn't feel quite right for me personally but yeah so fairly long season um i'm guessing you came into it pretty cautious and kind of risk averse has that changed throughout the season like your relationship with risk yeah definitely i was very i held back a lot i think i still did towards the end of the season in practice especially. Okay. I always have done. I'm not one to go all in. I'll just look at my lines, ride them well, ride them as good as I can, ride sections as fast as I can, then piece it all together by my race run. I don't really want to risk going that fast every run because like, there's a higher risk of crashing, obviously. <laughs> yeah. um, but you do feel weirdly safer when because but you're in the zone and you don't have that in practice you don't have a flow state or a zone you're picking and choosing and you're seeing people you're chatting you it's not the same so it's just it feels a bit more dangerous to go fast then yeah um but the problem with that was i was i would then get to my race run and i get into the zone and tani in the zone is still tani that wants to win so there are multiple times where as we could see i crashed a lot this season and i think you know, if you had told me this a year ago and show me the crashes I had this year, I'd be like, whoa, I don't want to do that. <laughs> They're the worst I've ever had, ever. But I got up from every single one of them, which is great. Yeah. Some of them were a bit scarier than others. But I think they were necessary because I'm finding that limit again. I don't know what that limit is again yet. It's been so long 
that I've had a consistent season and it is so much easier when you've got the ball rolling and you get into a zone and you know what works for you and like I've been there you just it ends up being like it's just it ends up being normal like there are times I got into a start gate when I was winning and I was like as long as I hit all my lines like I'll win today yeah that level of confidence is crazy. Like I look over at some of the guys, I'm like, you're lucky. <laughs> I appreciate that feeling because it fucking sucks when you don't have it. <laughs> but it's a process. It's yeah. like I said, it's all like clockwork. So um, I've enjoyed the process a lot. I felt like a kid again this year. I felt Good. like trying to find the limit, having gnarly crashes and then being televised is always cool. Like, because then sometimes you get to the bottom of the run you're like oh i had a gnarly crash and everyone's like yeah yeah whatever <laughs> and it's not until they see it like oh, that was gnarly but yeah just finding that limit again it's been fun and i don't think i've got there yet but i finished the season thinking i can win again like i want to win again that's good i feel like if it happens or not like that's just the way it is but i feel like you've got to believe it to what to for it to happen yeah. so do you think you'll win in a happier healthier way as well like it yeah. feels like you're in a much better place you know what i always used to think i'm gonna be honest here i always just think when i watched Ra- rachel win when i was younger i used to think she's so emotional like it's just a race like you're just winning a the race there's not much to it i was like whatever like <laughs> and i used to be quite neutral if i was to win now you can guarantee that i'll be 10 times more emotional <laughs> and like i just think because i've matured a lot more now yeah. i can completely understand because if i was to win now like it would mean so much more than it did when i was younger and a bit carefree and didn't have any of these issues or whatever you know it's just it's just different now and i think i can appreciate that now yeah and i can probably understand why it would be a bit annoying for rachel to see me a bit blasé about shit (laughs) class yeah so what are the plans for the future then it sounds like we've got maybe two hard lines in a world cup series coming up yeah i mean like i said the tasmania one is freaking me out a little bit i'm not gonna lie so i'm not putting any pressure on myself and again i get sad because i'm like oh if i turn up and don't ride has that taken someone's spot but then i remember that i've managed to make this happen so I'm trying really hard to get more girls and more spots, but I think it's quite limited for the men as well. So it's only a certain amount of spots available and I'll try my very best, but like I haven't seen it, you know, it's not built yet. So I think I am a bit nervous for that. The Welsh hard line, I'm super excited for. I think we could get someone doing a top to bottom, which would be amazing. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just, but again, I'll focus on my, on the World Cups because that's what I love most. Yeah. I fell out of love for it, you know, a few times. I thought, oh, and I went into the free ride world a bit. I'm like, oh, is this what I like more? This is fun for sure. But I need goals and I need um, something to fight for. Like mm-hmm. I'm competitive. Like I need people to race against and I need yeah, that race format, I need to tick stuff off. I love that. I find it so fun, which is weird because I know a lot of people don't like it. But Yeah, and it's yeah. a hell of a field as well, right? There's a lot of uh, fast women these days to yeah. go up against. Like Nina's on form, when Miriam's back, yeah. Cammy's insane, Valley seems to have really started to like find her space in the elite women's yeah. field. Like it's going to be yeah, deep. It's, it's, it's a deep field. Yeah. It's got to the point now, you know, it's... Um, it's nice because you don't really know who's going to win like everyone's got their strengths and weaknesses and it could be anyone's on race day and i feel like you know i feel like we're going to see a lot from marine now yeah true you know she's had a lot of injuries and i think people forget because she's not always been up there but she's had she's broken her back twice yeah pretty close together as well which is crazy yeah um and they've been big injuries to get back from um, other injuries so yeah I think she found a groove at the end and I've always been afraid of Marine when I was in in my good years I was like oh my god she's coming up fast <laughs> but um, I think she's finally found that groove and yeah Nina's so incredibly strong and I mean Valley's just the, the best bike rider I've probably ever seen so technically you know it's it's um and then Phoebe's coming along yeah which... how are you finding that because like you said you're your, your best mates but it's yeah. the first time you've had an elite woman alongside you in the yeah. team like and like you're competitive like you say <laughs> <laughs> like do you how has that been and do you think it will get more challenging as you get 
back to where you kind of really feel like you should be because you're both on yeah. a similar trajectory almost yeah well I think this year was really beneficial for us both because me coming back from injury and her being so young gaining experience we were very close a lot of the time we we're on like a similar speed mm -hmm. and I think that was a good gateway into the future as in because and also I remember when dad said that we were going to sign her I was like what I signed a girl it just didn't make sense in uh -huh. my head and like we've always wanted to help people and youngsters but we'd never found anyone that fit yeah and they all call me the princess on the <laughs> team and you know it's just it felt a bit weird like everything's always revolved around me like I know yeah, that fair. sounds so bad to say and it's like it sounds selfish and self-absorbed but that's how the team was created that's why it's there right and um so the addition at the time for me you can imagine was a bit like Oh, and it hadn't been chatted about either. So, but Phoebe is the best human. It's just, she's so funny. She made last year and this year a lot more bearable for me and way more nice. fun. And I was scared because obviously my relationships competitively before have been sometimes unhealthy. Uh -huh. But I think because of that and because of what I've seen, and experience i don't want to be that for phoebe i want to be a good role model and i want to try my very best to try and teach her and i want to see her do well like i really want her to thrive and obviously she's part of the team now part of the family so that's it i think as soon as you're you know you it's almost like you there's unwritten rules so that's it you have each <laughs> other's back and um we're both competitive but it's good we're, it's like a sisterly competitiveness like we'll get pissed at each other yeah and she gets so annoyed at me when i beat her at other stuff <laughs> like badminton or like cards like we get competitive but i feel like it's in a healthy way and then there were races this year where i did shit and i was so pissed and then she'd do well and i'm like ah oh, it's all right now whatever like That's ace. and then you know she'd do rubbish and then see me podium for the first time since my concussion and she teared up and stuff and it's just at the end of the day, we're sharing something we both love. So, you know, and at, on the day, whoever wins, wins. And that's just it. You shake your hand and that's it. Like, fair play, you rode better than me, whatever. Yeah. And that's what I kind of hope that she learns as well. And But doesn't lose that fire to want to beat people. But yeah. you can still be respectful and have love for, for someone. Totally. Yeah. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure catching up. Thanks for making some time in a very hectic schedule. Uh, I'm excited to see you back. Like it's been cool watching you work your way back this season and Thank see the you. pace kind of increasing throughout the year and like riding with more confidence and more aggression. And I'm excited yeah. for more of that next year. I think it's going to be an exciting year of racing. I'm excited to get stuck in, honestly. Awesome. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> if people want to follow you throughout the season, where's the best place for them to look? Ah, wow. They can tune in to... What is it? GMBN, um, Eurosport. Yeah, for that, that stuff. stuff. But for you but, personally, like Instagram still or? Yeah, for me personally, um, Instagram. I'm a bit quiet on there at the moment. I tend to take a bit of time off because it's so hectic in the season. Uh -huh. But yeah, I, I post. I think if you wanted to see more of me and my results and stuff, yeah, my Instagram. That's all I really do yeah. nowadays. And will yeah. there be a How We Roll again? There will be a How We Roll again, yeah. Nice. It's coming out soon, but um, I don't actually have much information on it. Okay. They've been quite secretive about Interesting. it. Interesting. But it's on the Canyon YouTube, I think, wasn't it, last time anyway? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it will most definitely be on Canyon YouTube again. Okay, nice. I'll stick some links to the previous yeah. series and to your Instagram and stuff in the show notes. But yeah, Perfect. thanks, Tiny. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you.